Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be how to baby proof your home. Now, my baby Theo is nine months old now and he is so very on the move and babies are typically on the move about sort of seven to eight months. So you might wanna start thinking to start doing some of these things around that sort of time. If your baby is anything like mine, he'll go straight into a room and be attracted to almost anything that he shouldn't be. Um, so there, this is just all the sort of tips and tricks that um, we find work um, with our baby and baby proofing our home. So I'm gonna jump straight into the video um, with the first one. Okay, so the very first thing I actually do want to say is the best thing that you can do for your baby is to never leave them. Babies will, as I said, typically find anything that they shouldn't find or shouldn't want to play with. Um, so the best thing that you can do is actually just be with your baby and just watch over them um, and just make sure that they are safe. So plugs and plug sockets, you can get these little adapters that you can plug straight in to your plug sockets and they're really handy, it just stops um, kids or little babies from you know trying to poke their fingers in there or toys in there um, and getting a shock. Um, so we've plugged some of these around the house at points that we feel like they're um, near the kids' toys mainly. There's one in the kitchen and we've got a black chalkboard um, and some baskets of toys as well and it's directly under this so it's right near where they play so we've popped some plug sockets into them. Blankets and sort of throws as well. This might be the time if you've got a blanket that you sort of have over the side of your sofa or maybe in a box on the floor is to maybe just pop them away a little bit out of reach. Babies will be pulling at them and obviously could pull them over their heads um, and obviously then that is a risk of suffocation. Um, so you just want to pop them away in a safe place. You can buy some really good kitchen cupboard locks. If your babies are anything like mine, Theo wants to be opening the cupboards, having a look in there and just investigating, but obviously this can be a really dangerous too, especially if you've got food items that you don't want them to get, or especially if there's cleaning items, obviously lots of people store cleaning items under the sink. Um, so we wanna be getting some locks on these cupboards as well. Um, and um, I've just bought some really good magnet ones. Um, so basically you attach the sort of clip on the inside of the cupboard and then with a magnet that it comes with, you put on the outside and this will just unlock it. So you don't see anything from the outside. Your cupboards would look like they haven't got any locks on them, um, but using these magnets that they come with, um, you'll be able to open and close your doors easily. If you are cooking in your kitchen, don't forget to turn your saucepans um, to the inside. So don't have them hanging over the edge. Um, obviously accidents can happen and you don't want to be hitting that saucepan, especially with kids if they're sort of under your feet around the kitchen area. So do remember to turn those handles to the side. So up in the bathroom, what we have done to baby proof our bathroom is to get a slip mat and baby seat. So the slip mat just really helps obviously with older children as well. Bath tubs can become very slippery. Um, so this just provides them a little bit more grip um, to become a little less slippy within the bath. And then obviously a baby seat as well. We pop Theo into that still and he really enjoys being in his seats and he still loves to splash and play around in that. But again, for us, it's just extra security that he's safe within his bath. Stairs and a stair gate is so important. Stairs can be obviously incredibly dangerous and especially Theo at the moment, he's very curious with stairs and he's actually just learned how to crawl up a couple of steps. So it was definitely time for us to get our stair gate down from the loft and reinstall that um, at the bottom of the stairs. So we've, um, I would recommend having one at the bottom and one at the top. Um, so you're covered both sides. I know a couple of people do put them on their kids' bedrooms as well, as then they could leave them in there to play with their toys. Corner seals are the next one that I wanted to talk about, and these are things that you can pop onto the corners of your furniture. So lots of furniture obviously has really sort of like sharp points and edges, um, so these will just help conceal those, and it's sort of like a rubbery texture, so that if your kids do bump into it, 
and um, they, they won't hurt themselves. You can also buy some fireplace strips. Obviously the half on the bottom of the fireplace is really hard and if your child falls on that and sort of hurts themselves, maybe bumps their head, um, that will obviously really hurt them. So you can buy this, um, I guess it's like rubbery material that you you can stick at the bottom and corners of your fireplace and this will just protect them. Another thing we have done now that Theo has got that much older and is on the move is actually remove lots of small toys um, from his elder sister's um, toy box and this is in the sort of communal areas where they play together. So downstairs in the front room I've gone through all of her toys and just taken out any small things that I think maybe they're too small if you'll put it in his mouth or things like that. Um, just obviously anything that I think is a choking hazard to him and they've all gone up into her bedroom to stay in there for her to just play with there. Um, then I know that if he's down here, anything he picks up is gonna be safe. Now Theo is on the move and he is so wriggly when I am changing him. I can barely keep him still anymore. Um, so I do not change him on top of a changing mat or drawers anymore. I have moved his changing mat to the floor. I find this just the safest way because obviously if he does wriggle and wriggle out of control of me, the changing mat is on the floor anyway. So he's just going to be on the floor um, as opposed to falling if um, I wasn't able to catch him. So this is just, I feel safer doing it this way um, now that he's bigger. Cups of tea, us mums love a cup of tea. And um, did you know that actually a cup of tea can burn a baby even 15 minutes after you've made it? So really keep those cups of tea up high and out of reach. Don't leave it on the edges or anywhere that a baby could reach it. As soon as your baby is rolling and especially standing, it is time to lower that cot and lower it to the lowest setting that you can. Um, so Theo's is now on the lowest setting. He's standing, has been standing for a while now. So it's just the safest to be, um, then you know obviously they can't climb out. You are going to want to keep any cleaning products out of reach. So obviously as before I did mention about uh, the locks you can get if you've got them under your sink. So you're going to want to make sure that they are either locked away like that or obviously put up high into a cupboard up high so that your children babies can't reach them. The cords that are on a blind as well, you're going to want to make sure that these are screwed to the wall. Um, these are a big hazard if they are not. So definitely make sure they're screwed. Um, I think every manufacturer now recommends it and they all come with something that you can screw to a wall. So it's really important that you do this. As well as this, make sure that your furniture is also screwed to the wall, especially drawers. Um, kids as well as they get older can pull these drawers out and almost use them as a step to try and reach something that they're trying to get to um, and this causes furniture to tip. Um, so obviously you do not want that happening, so do make sure that furniture is screwed to the wall. Babies um, do not need anything in their cot with them, so no toys or pillows or blankets. Um, they actually don't need pillows until they're about two years old. In fact, I think Amelia was about two and a half when she had her first pillow. Um, but these can be quite dangerous for them um, when sleeping if there's anything in their cot. So this is everything that I wanted to share with you today. I really do hope that you found this video useful in baby proofing your home. And thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.